Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Here we have a very tasty beer, I'm sure, because I have reviewed it once before. This is uh, the Lost Abbey, and they're out of California. This is their Track 10, and what that is is an American Double or Imperial uh, Stout aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, when I did this back in 2015, uh, I couldn't find a date on it anymore, and I, I don't remember to go back and, and, and read the uh, or look at the video. This was sent to me by my brother Rico, and he's got a big yellow label on it saying it's a 2015 of a bird. I'm not sure what version I did back in March of 2015, whether it was the 2015 or the 2014, because I couldn't find a vintage on it anymore. I did not know. He's telling me this is a 2015, and I'm not sure how he knows that. Unless there's some kind of dating on the bottle. Uh, I don't see it right now with the brown bottle and the uh, probably black writing on it, but we'll look again just like I did in 2015 and see if I can find out exactly what vintage it is. So this is a 2015. We're re-reviewing it here in July of 2017. Uh, I thought it was an excellent beer. The only plus I had then, I couldn't find a vintage on it. I didn't know it was a 2011, 2014, 2015 uh, beer that I was going to, and, and the vintage is the only thing that I was interested in, the year. The month is helpful to let us know whether they did it in January, July, or December of that year, but today is irrelevant. So if they would put the month and the year on there, that would be super. As, <laughs> as a little, the memes I saw, or the memes I see on Facebook, that'd be great. So. Uh, would like to see that, and, and Lost Abbey is big enough to do that. And the reason they, do, they don't do that is because it gives it a longer shelf life. But at a 13 and a half percenter, it's going to keep a long, long time. 10, 15, 20 years even. So there's no reason why you could not sell this beer. And, I have, uh, and I've had this one for a while. Rico sent it to me a while back. And I didn't do it because I had done it back in 2015. So he's telling me, this is the 2015, so I'll look at the bottle when I come back and see if I can see any writing on it anywhere. Uh, they need you to, they do need you to put a vintage on it. Month would be helpful. The vintage is critical in case you want to do a vertical side by side two different years. So that's where we're going to leave that. Once again, Rico, my brother, thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. Uh, so let's see what this brings to the table. This is <coughs> excuse me. This is their track 10, that out of hell. And they keep calling this a box set track 10. So I don't know what that means, whether this is packaged with another beer or what. Some of you folks uh, that, uh, that have purchased this in the box set, maybe put some comments in there on what, what other beer came with this if you bought it in the box set. That's what I'm thinking the box set means. Uh, but I've only been able to get my hands on two different individual versions. Uh, so let's see what it brings to the table. It's got a big, long commercial description here on Beer Advocate. I am going to read it because this is probably a very pricey beer. Uh, it says here, formerly known as Serpent Stout, bourbon brown aged with cocoa nibs and coffee. Coffee is the killer on this. If it has coffee in it, that's going to fade over time, just like hops do. And I don't see that. Yes, I do. I do see that. Track 10, Imperial Stout aged in bourbon brown with coffee and cocoa nibs added. So... If it's a 2015 and it's had coffee introduced in it, I may have cellared this too long, guys. Uh, the coffee may have faded by now. So we'll, we're going to find out here in just a minute. We'll get the corked and cage out of this and, 
It's a fairly small bottle, but it's corking cage, which means it's a price of beer usually. So, uh, it says here a fresh track, track can begin with a fresh serpent stout base, aged in bourbon barrels, with oddities of coffee and cocoa nibs added shortly before packaging. Late in November of 2011, Mike Rodriguez, our head brewer, asked about creating a coffee and cocoa nib version of Serpent Stout for the San Diego Strong Ale Festival. The beer was a hit with our fans. When we wrote up the syllabus for the ultimate box set, we knew a version of this beer would be included. We waited till the very end of the release schedule to put this beer in a bottle so that the coffee and cocoa nibs really come through. Four bourbon barrels were selected for their rich and dense chocolate flavors. One week before packaging, we added 17 pounds of Ryan Brothers coffee and four pounds of TCHO cocoa nibs to steep before packaging. So, I'm not exactly sure what to expect here on this, guys. I don't know how much coffee I'm going to get that has been in a bottle for two years now, depending on what month of the year that they packaged it in 2015. Did they package it in January of 2015, July of 2015, or December of 2015? Not sure. So, another reason I like to see the month and the day on these vintages, so you know what part of the year that they put it in the bottle, and what the year it was put in the bottle. In case you want to do a vertical, two different years. So, that's all we need to talk about. Uh, as far as IBUs, I doubt if we got that. I do not have it. So. It is time. Let's get the cork and cage out of the bottle here and get it into the glass. And not had very bad experiences on cork and cage stouts spewing all over the place, but I have had other ones that are cork and cage spew. Let's see what happens here. Nice pop. A little bit of smoke coming out of it. And I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure this is a pricey beer to buy. So, thanks again, Brico. I do appreciate it, sir. Yeah, it's pitch black coming out of the damn bottle here. So let's go down the center, see if it generates any head. It says here, cheese is buttery, brie, good Havarti Swiss. General chocolate, digestive, meats, beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Flash wire, pint, becker, nine, tumbler, snifter, oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter. It says here, can be set up for long periods. The coffee is the only kicker in that, guys. If it's had coffee added to it, that's going to fade over time. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to get on coffee notes uh, being a two-year-old bottle, approximately, depending on what month they bottled it. Didn't pour any head straight down the center over to the light. There is none in this pitch black, guys, the darkest night. I was really impressed with this other than the dating on this bottle when I did it in March of 2015. Let's get another thought. Very nice bourbon notes. Excellent bourbon notes, I will say. Not getting a big coffee whip on the nose. I might get a little bit more on the taste. Plus, it's cold right out of the fridge. We're going to let it warm up like I always do. Rich roasted malt, brown sugar, molasses, black molasses. A little bit of alcohol, 13.5% now, big beer, big boy beer. But the bourbon notes are definitely there. Very nice uh, aroma on the stout. I'm getting big coffee notes on the nose. Let's see what we got on the taste. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. getting coffee on the taste. Now, I do remember Parrish sent me the original bottle of this back in 2015. That's delicious, guys. That's absolutely delicious. Got a feeling the coffee notes would have been a lot stronger in 2015 when this was bottled than they are right now. I'm going to take a quick look. He does have a big yellow sticker right here. It says it's 2015. And it may be written on the label here somewhere or on the bottle somewhere that it is a 2015. But I do not see it. Still got some condensation on the bottle. 
but I do not see any writing on there. We'll look. At, I'll take another closer look when I come back and see if I see anything on there. Evidently, he knew some somehow that it was a 2015. So maybe it's written on the label somewhere or on the bottle. But when I come back and all this condensation has gone off the bottle, I'll take a quicker look. It's right out of the fridge. Just let it warm up. Let her taste it. Sip on it for a little bit and see what we end up with. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Looked at the bottle when I got back. I don't know how Rico knows this is 2015. I could find no vintage on the bottle whatsoever, guys. And just like I said in 2015, these guys are big enough to put a vintage on their label. This is the biggest reason why they're not going to get a 10 from me. Uh, they need to put a vintage on the damn bottle. Come on. Give me a break. I know this is not a cheap bottle to buy with a cork in a cage in it. Print the vintage on the freaking label. Not on the bottle. Not in black ink on a brown bottle with dark brown or black beer in it. Print it on the label. This is the 2015 edition. This is the 2014 edition. This is the 2017 edition. Do it! There's no excuse for that. And that's the, that's the biggest reason why I'm not going to give it a 10. So, uh, there's a very tasty beer. The coffee notes are very subdued now. Uh, another reason why we need to vintage on there. So, you'll know this is a 2015 edition. It's got coffee in it. You need to drink it fresh. So, but it is an excellent beer. Uh, it's got great bourbon notes. A lot of black molasses. A little bit of bittersweet chocolate. Maybe some hints of some dark fruit in there. Very well made beer, guys. It is. It saddens my heart that they won't print a vintage on it. I would not buy this beer if it didn't have a vintage on it. So, Rico, thanks again, my brother. And Parrish for sending the, the, uh, the last one I did in 2015. Uh, it's a great beer, guys. They just need to step up to the frickin' plate and put a vintage on their bottles. It's my opinion. Final joke. Awesome beer, guys. Outstanding beer. Just the right amount of bourbon on this. Like I said, the, the coffee has already faded. I'm not getting a whole lot of coffee on this beer. Now the reason why we need a vintage on the, on the label. They, they got on the label that they put coffee in it. We need a vintage on it. Just like having hops in a beer, we need a, we need a date. So, a month and a day, a month and a year would be excellent on this beer. And there's nothing. There is nothing. So, I'm going to put it the same place I put it the last time in 2015. This is a 9 out of 10. Uh, Numeric rating for me would probably be a 99. That's where I'm going to put it. The only reason I'm not giving it a 100 is because there is no vintage. That's the only freaking reason. This would be a 10 outstanding world class beer if it did and it does not. And these guys can do it. And they choose not to. So I choose not to give them the 10. Great beer guys. If you can get this and if you know it's fresh and you want to taste some of that coffee Make sure it's fresh. I don't know how you're going to do that. I just don't know without them putting more information than they're doing. So, we're at their, we're at their mercy since they're not doing that. So, uh, that's why they're not getting the 10 from me again. Two times, two times that they've not done that. I uh, don't understand that. I, I do, but I, I hate it that they don't. They do that because they want the spirit to sell. And if it sits on the shelf for three, four, five years, uh, they know they're going to sell it eventually. And it's not going to go bad, but you're not going to taste that coffee when it's been in the bottle that long. So, 99 for me, guys. It is an A beer, no doubt. Beer Advocate says 97, world class. I'm giving it a 99. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. It is an awesome beer, guys. It's very, very tasty. It's a great beer for the final beer of the evening, which it is for me. Uh, I just wish I had more information than what they're willing to give us. And over to Untapped, they have it at 4.35. A numbers from those guys also. A numbers all the way around. Uh, they would give probably better numbers. I know for me that they put a vintage on it. So we're going to leave it at that. Enough harping on that dead horse. It's a great beer. 
It's a great beer. It's a very enjoyable beer. It's a very pricey beer, I'm sure, with the cork and cage that they put on this. So another reason why we want more information. So, with that being said, if you've had this one, the Track 10 from Lost Abbey, whatever year it is, I don't know how you're going to determine that. Because I don't know how to determine that. I don't know how Rico determined it. It was a 2015 edition, but it's what he says, so we're going to leave it at that. Uh, I just wish he's got Maybe the 2017 has that on there. I don't know. Or the 2016. I'm not sure. Time will tell. If you've had something newer than a 2015 and it has it on there, let me know. Put it in the comments. And uh, until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.